Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov, and I am the editor at Metastellar. Every Friday, the gang here at our magazine read the top 10 free sci-fi and fantasy books on Amazon. Well, we don't read usually the whole book, just the first few chapters to see how we like it. Today, I had help from Amira Lutfi, our reviews editor, and Alex Korolov, our news editor, but neither of them could make it here today for the taping, so it's just me. Okay, so um, the link to the full article is in the description box below. For those who are new to our channel, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free for our readers. We publish original short fiction from hundreds of authors, reprints, excerpts, essays, and lots and lots of book reviews. We're able to do this thanks to our Patreon supporters. And a link to the Patreon page is in the description box below as well. So um, let's get into it. Um, the first of today's books is Beyond the Sapphire Gate by R.V. Johnson. Amira read this book. And um, so she's personally not a fan of this particular trope. So this is the first of three books in the Flow of Power, First Contact Science Fiction series. The other books are $5 each and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited is the Netflix for books. You pay 10 bucks a month and you read as many books as you want. So really good deal uh, if you have a Kindle or a Kindle app on your device. So uh, the story is about Crystalline, whose job is to transfer information from physical sources and the digital ones, which she calls dot mapping. So I guess she scans things for a living. Uh, one day she finds a beautiful book with enticing beautiful symbols on the cover. She can't pull herself away from it. And then when the symbolist symbol starts moving and she thinks she's going crazy. And her boss is concerned that she got her hands on this book because it's supposed to be locked away. And she's worried about her job back home. She, her family needs her to keep this job. So, uh, so she agrees to work the next day, which is a holiday. Normally she has it off. And um, Amira says that it seems to be a far future science fiction uh, story. And um, she, she likes the story. It's well written. Um, but um, she probably won't be back for this particular book. Uh, next is a book that I read, Enchanted Dusk by Sky Jones and Marissa Ferrer, the third of four books in the Wicked Monsters urban fantasy series. The other books, the other books are one to three dollars each, but all those books are also free today, and the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. So uh, it's a reverse harem romance. Wow, we're getting a lot of alerts today. This is a reverse harem romance, meaning that the woman has multiple boyfriends all at once. I guess if you're gonna go with a fantasy, might as well just go all the way. Uh, I personally think it's a little bit too much work. So I'm not a fan of this particular romance subgenre. I mean, I'm not generally a fan of romance at all. Um, but sometimes I get into the book anyway. So, uh, so I started reading this book and I'm like, well, this feels like we're picking up in the middle of a story and duh, it's the third of four books in a series. But the first book is also free, Night Captive. So I pulled that one up. Um, so in that book, Aisha is 19. And she, when she was three, she was thrown into the pit uh, and has been there since she was she was since she was three. So the pit is like a mountain valley uh, with where these people are trapped, uh, women are trapped, and they're and they're kind of managed by these people called keepers or or monsters. They have pale skin, skin and elongated limbs, and it's super creepy. Um, and she's good at plants, so she knows what plants can be good for healing things. And she helps out some of the other women, all of them, most of them younger than her, um, from what I can tell. Um, and she's becoming an adult. Um, they've, the keepers who, who manage them have been giving her slightly better food, which is a little creepy. 
And uh, so she knows that her time is coming when uh, she's going to be taking somewhere. And then she's taken. Um, this guy comes and takes her, extremely muscular. And he can fly. And he doesn't look like the other keepers. He doesn't look like a monster. He looks very handsome. So uh, it's a readable book. I mean, all the books on the top 10 list are very readable. But I am not a fan of the whole slavery monster kind of thing. Um, so I am not going to be back for this. But um, if reverse harems and, um, and these kinds of tropes are your thing, uh, pick it up because it's free. All right, next, uh, let's go to Dead Ringer by Kat Ross. A standalone gothic horror book by Kat Ross. Um, it's usually $8, but today it's free. It's not in Kindle Unlimited. So if you want this book, grab it now. Kat Ross has been on this list before. Last month, um, Amira reviewed City of Storms, the first book in the Nightmarked fantasy series. And last November, I reviewed The Feast of Phantoms, um, a steampunk fantasy series. And we both love the books that we reviewed. And I love this one too. And I'm going to be sticking with it. So the story begins in the summer of 1889 in Brooklyn. Harry works for the American Society for Psychical Research, and he regularly cooperates with the Ninth Detectives Division, often known as the Ninth Squad. Um, that's the police unit that investigates bizarre cases. And they're looking for a monster that comes out of the sewers to attack people. And Harry and his best friend John have spent weeks looking for the monster in the sewers. I love the start of this book. Uh, the characters are fun. The, it's a light tone. It's a fun read. I'm enjoying uh, the main character. It feels like a perfect weekend read. So I'm going to be sticking with it. And I recommend the, the rest of her books too. All right, next we go on to uh, Marked Omega by Lizzie Bequin. And this and the second book in the series um, are both on the top 10 list. And this is uh, number six on the list, Shared Omega. Omega, um, let's go back to it. Um, here it is, Marked Omega. So a um, little creepy book, again, not my genre. So it's a dystopian future. It's a hundred years after a pandemic has attacked the planet and um, people live behind, behind walls and uh, judging by the cover, and I don't know if you can see this in the picture, there is a mostly naked woman woman there and three hot naked guys. So I'm guessing it's another reverse harem romance. But I didn't read far enough in to find out. So I didn't get to the romantic parts yet. So um, the protagonist is Lily. Um, she's a researcher for Synergen. She's 21. Uh, and her boss is a manipulative creep. Uh, she and another researcher, uh, also a young woman, are accompanying him beyond the wall to where the zombies are. So they're all dressed in protective gear. They have three armed guards with them. And they head outside the wall, ostensibly to rescue another researcher who's, who's been lost there for weeks. Um, but it turns out that this was just a ruse. Her boss is there to capture these zombies and she and the researchers aren't, other researcher aren't there to help him, they're the bait. So the book is extremely readable. I'm not a fan of zombie apocalypse stories. I'm not a fan of reverse harem romances, but I do have to say that the book is extremely readable if you like that kind of thing. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not gonna come back to it because like I said, it's extremely readable. But um, if I do, I will never admit it. All right, next we go on to Mountain of Fangs by Carlo Hart. The first of three books in the Mountain of Fangs um, horror series. The other books are three to four dollars each and the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. And Alex read this 
And he says that the book takes a while to get going, but um, it's a nice read for people who like fantasy horror books featuring creepy supernatural creatures. So the story is that uh, Hollywood writer, Kevin Murphy, uh, has, isn't doing so well in his Hollywood writing career. And he's moved to a tree covered mountain in California with his girlfriend, and he's growing medical cannabis to make ends meet. And he keeps seeing a creepy flying man creature with red eyes. And uh, Alex read uh, up to chapter seven and it, nothing still has happened except that the creature has scared um, Kevin Murphy a little bit. So Alex says he likes his action right at the start of the book. And so he won't keep reading. But if you like the slow build kind of suspense, check it out. Oh, uh, so then we have number six on the book, Shared Omega, um, uh, which uh, I'm not going to read because it's the second in the series, in case <clears throat> I do go back and finish the first one. I don't want to spoil it for myself, but I'll tell you a little bit about the plague. Um, so, so we got a little bit of backstory in the first chapter of that first book. So what happened was a century earlier, uh, the plague hit. Nobody knows where it came from, whether it was an attack or aliens or what but it still hasn't abated. And what it does is it turns some of the infected people into betas, mindless zombie, zombies who die quickly. Then some, uh, some of the men become alphas, hyper-masculine, super macho beasts who all they wanna do is have sex. And some of the women become omegas, also desperate to have sex. Okay. So I am not a fan of that premise. Um, and and per, as a personal side, side note, the whole alpha beta thing that's supposed to come from wolf research has been thoroughly and completely debunked. There's no alpha wolves and beta wolves, there's parent wolves and the kids who pay attention to their parents. Uh, so kid wolves so sometimes pay attention to their parents. So yeah, so anytime I see that, I cringe a little bit on the inside and on the outside, as you just saw. All right, uh, next we have Autumn Winters by J.S. Malcolm, the first book in the Realm Watchers urban fantasy series. The other books are $4 each and the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. So the story here is that Autumn's husband died in a car crash and she almost died as well. She went up in a coma for a while as she saw the bright light, the tunnel, the whole thing. But something told her that she was needed, wasn't her time yet. And she eventually kind of recovered. She didn't recover all the way though. She's extremely depressed. She is drinking all the time and she sees ghosts everywhere. And these ghosts don't know that they're ghosts. They still think they're alive. And she's the only one who can see them and hear them. And they keep latching onto her. So the drinking helps a little bit, helps her deal with all this a little bit too. Then she sees one of those ghosts on the nightly news uh, when she's in the liquor store buying more liquor. It's a young woman and she's missing. And Autumn thinks that if she could talk to the ghost, uh, convince her that she's not dead, you know, break the news to her, uh, maybe she can find the ghost's body and give the parents some closure. But the ghost is now gone. So it's a bit of a slow start to the book and it uh, doesn't quite seem like my kind of book. It's a little too serious and sad, but it's really pulling me in. And I, I think I might be sticking with it this weekend. All right, next we have, what do we have next? London, uh, here you go, there's the cover. London, um, which is, uh, the first book of 19 in the Surviving the Evacuation post-apocalyptic series. The next two books in the series are both free today. The other 16 books are three to four dollars each and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. Um, so this is kind of a zombie apocalypse book if you like those kind of books. Plenty of people do. This book has thousands of five-star reviews. So people love it. Alex read this one. Thank God, because I hate apocalypse books. Um, but it wasn't his thing either, because it was kind of slow. So what happens is 
uh, our main character, Bill, broke his leg and he was stuck at home on bed rest when the apocalypse broke out. London's evacuated and he's stuck in a cast. He can't reach anyone by phone and he winds up getting left behind. Um, so Alex says he's here at the fifth of the book and he found it really boring. It's written like a series of diary entries uh, written by Bill. He's counting down the days until he can take his cast off. And he starts out at 76. So he has a little bit of information about what's happening in the world. So you get some glimpses of the apocalypse. But most of the book is him complaining about not having electricity or get, having any decent food and being bored to death from being stuck in the house. Uh, Alex says it's an interesting take on a zombie story, but he'd rather be reading about the people in the middle of the action. So, um, but if you like um, this kind of build, check it out. Uh, next, we have The Discovered by Maggie Sinceri. Here we go. The first of five books in the Lost Witches of Aradia urban fantasy series. The next two books are $6 each. The fourth and fifth books are currently available for pre-order. It will be coming out this July and October. They're not in Kindle Unlimited. So that's a strike against this. I really don't like getting into a series where I'm gonna to have to pay for the rest of the books uh, because I read a lot. I mean, I'm not, I'm not cheap, I'm also cheap. But um, also, given the choice of two equally good books, one of which isn't Kindle Unlimited, one isn't, I'll pick the one in Kindle Unlimited. And there's a lot of good books. Okay, so Ain, or maybe it's spelled A I A with a like a mark over it. So maybe Aina or At Annie. Anyway, she's just turned 22, and she's always had the ability to read people's emotions. But, uh, but she has more powers, but there's a bracelet around her wrist that keeps her from using those powers. And she got the bracelet from her mom and her aunt. Um, but she's celebrating her birthday on her way home from the bar. One of her friends is attacked and she instinctively uses her powers to save her friend by pushing, magically pushing the, 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 car, the car that's about to hit her out of the way. And uh, the bracelet just burns, burns up. Um, and so nothing's keeping her from using her powers anymore. Uh, but there's been people looking for her and the bracelet has also kept her hidden from them. And now that the bracelet's gone and they can track her and they show up immediately. Uh, one of those people is, is in disguise as a policeman and he chases after her and so, and then somebody, some mysterious person who talks to her telepathically swoops in and saves her. So I kind of seen this premise before way too many times. That's not a bad thing. I mean, I've watched every episode of Law and Order, um, but it's, it's not enough to pull me in. I'm also not a fan of young adult stories. Uh, plus the other books are in, uh, are not in Kindle Limited. Plus it seems to ha seems to be like a, a romance kind of story, but the book does have a very strong beginning. And if you enjoy seeing your heroines with magical powers coming into their own, check it out. Finally, the last book in today's list is Moon uh, by Moon by T. Thorn Coyle, the fifth book of nine in the Witches of Portland urban fantasy series. The other books are a dollar to five dollars each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. So the first book isn't free and isn't in Kindle Unlimited. So I looked at the look inside feature on Amazon where you can like read the first few pages of a book. So Cassiel is a 22-year-old redhead with a pretty nice life. She works at a cafe, and her boss at the cafe is a member of the coven that she's in. So this is the second 22-year-old witch in today's top 10 list. That mm -hmm. seems like an odd coincidence. Uh, her power is that she can talk to ghosts. So it's the second witch who can talk to ghosts, okay. 
So pol police call her on cases and she had to testify in murder cases. Well, like when she was like 14 years old, this created a lot of stress for her. So she left her hometown and moved to Portland, Oregon. Uh, then she sees a vision. She's, she sees a tower on fire and a, and a ghost tells her to follow the tower. Then we switch to the point of view of a guy named Joe, a plumber who also lives in Portland. And in his spare time, he rehabs classic homes with his brother. His girlfriend killed herself a year and a half ago. And he's been having this nightmare ever since regularly once a month. And so you know they're going to get together somehow. Um, this story begins slowly. The main characters did not grab me. Uh, plus, I would have had to pay for the rest of the books. So I'm going to pass on this series. But um, if you like a kind of a slow paced um, magical romance kind of thing, check it out. It's free. All right. So that were the books. Those were the books for today. If you like this kind of content, support our channel, hit the like, subscribe buttons, all the other stuff, support us on Patreon. Uh, thanks to the support of Patreon contributors, we're able to publish our original fiction. Like I said, we publish a lot of it, and it's always free to our readers. Um, and uh, what do you think of the books? Are you going to read any of them? Have you read any of them? Let us know in the description box below. And if you have any suggestions for books that we should review, uh, keep us posted. All right, you know, uh, oh, my, my email is also in the description box below in case you want to join me in doing these reviews, or if you have some ideas for your own science fiction and fantasy books that you'd like to review from Metastella. We'd love to see you both on our site and on this channel. All right, well, thanks guys for watching and hope everybody has a great weekend. Enjoy your reading. Bye-bye.